Hey everybody, Mike Kazmer here with Pink Bike. I'm sitting here with Bryn Atkinson and Tony Bowman. We're gonna be talking about Bryn's new bike. It's got a Norco range that's painted probably different than anything you've ever seen. It's called the Snake Bike. Uh, you can take some closer look at it there, but first we're gonna talk and see how exactly you turn a stock frame into something like this. I guess we'll start with a basic idea. How'd you decide to get a snake bike going? Man, I, I basically, was, as soon as I found out um, Tony moved into town, I live in Bellingham and um, Tony lives in Bellingham too. So. As soon as I found out he lived in, moved into town, I was like, damn, I kind of need to do something with this guy. Just seeing what he's done in the past, you know. And uh, so then this year rolled around and I was, I was just kind of thinking we needed to do something crazy. And, and uh, I kind of wanted like a snake bike. You know, we all ride these carbon machines, you know, and they just have these sleek lines to them. And they kind of look like snakes, you know, especially the range, you know. And so For those of you who don't know, this is Tony Bowman. Um, his company's made rad by Tony. He's made a bunch of kind of custom custom paint jobs in the past. I think Troy Brosnan's Galaxy bike, that's the one that probably a lot of people saw a couple of the two years ago. Yeah, so, yeah, 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 two yeah, years yeah. Ago. Cool. Yeah, so he's, that's what he does. He paints, paints bikes, turns them from stock form into something wild and kind of pretty creative like this. Um, so with this, how do you get started? And he comes to you with a concept and then what's the next step? Well, Bryn was a unique case because he's a very particular person who knows exactly what he wants. Um, so anytime I would deviate from kind of his vision, uh, he would he would check me pretty quickly. So, so he was the idea man, and I was just the executioner. That sounds good. <laughs> I mean, uh, going into it, like uh, you got to think, right? I'm t I'm telling people I want a snake bike, you know, like, and it's like you can see like in other people's imagination, they're like, oh, you could imagine them thinking, oh, well, it's gonna look real cheesy or whatever, right? And and so like, just you know making i was just make wanted to make sure it didn't look super cheesy you know i knew tony was just like awesome at what he did you know but it was just like one of those things where i guess it could have gone either way you know <laughs> yeah i could see that so you've got that you start working on it he brings you the frame you sand it down and then from there i mean how do you even get a pattern like that on there how does that uh, hours and hours of sitting at a desk uh after my vinyl plotter has cut kind of a pattern i actually have a special surprise for you Bryn. that just about 90% of the scales that I picked out of the, the vinyl. So uh, the other 10%. There you go. Look at all the scales. Oh, man, look at that. That's special. I like that. 10% yeah. <laughs> has ended up all over my house. And there's a lot of your skin off the end of your finger on the, in there too, eh? Some cat hair. It's all in there for you. So all told, how many hours do you think you spent obsessing over this thing? I would roughly estimate 80 to 90 hours somewhere in there. It was a pretty solid solid effort yeah that's, is that up there in the longest project for one frame you think yeah definitely yeah. would you do it again if the money's right <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so to make this obviously you're pretty at the top of your game that's pretty impressive how long you been doing this for um i've been painting stuff pretty much my whole life um i kind of branched off and started doing this full time probably three and a half years ago yeah, so you're a graffiti kid? Yeah, so I, uh, I dabbled in, in some spray paint, you know, as a kid and throughout college and stuff. And my mom kind of saw where my energy was going and kind of wanted to redirect it. So she bought me an airbrush and I just kind of started messing around with that, um, kind of instead. Uh, and then it just kind of tapered off into being a fully legal process. Cool, that's good. <laughs> <laughs> From the streets to yeah. making snake bikes. That's right. Yeah. Yeah, so in addition to that paint job, looks like some other companies kind of helped you out a little bit on there maybe. You got some fork that's not the standard stock. Yeah, Fox. yeah. Ray over at Fox, he, he uh, kind of stepped up and just made it look like it's a little half, half fox, half snake. So it's got that little thing going on, so it's pretty fun. But everything else is pretty mellow. We wanted to keep it really like uh, just make the paint be just the main feature on the, on the bike really, you know. So. Yeah. yeah, it doesn't look like you've ridden it yet. Are you gonna ride it at all, or? Dude, I don't know. After looking at the thing, it's it's just so nice, man. It literally is a work of art. I mean, if you if it, if anyone's here has a chance to see it in the flesh, it's it's uh it's just it's just so crazy to look at, you know. So. Yeah. So once you yeah once you work your fingers to the bone, plucking all that out and get it painted, what's the final finish to get it all kind of like meshed together and shiny? And yeah. So the final final part is the the clear coat, um, basically, and <clears throat> it's about maybe two rounds of clear, each one with about three to five coats of clear. Um, so it's really locked in um, as best as paint can be, you know, it's still paint. And if Bryn rides it like he rides stuff, then it will probably end up with a chip or two. Um, hey, 
So, uh, so yeah, it's just a lot of time trying to really make sure that no overspray is hitting the bottom of the top tube as I'm spraying the bottom of the down tube and just really kind of controlling where the overspray is going. Um, and then any little minor imperfections that might be in the end is all sanded and buffed out. So it is a glassy, slimy looking snake. Oh, yeah, so say, yeah, say I want to get a snake bike. How much would that cost? Well, my hourly rate is about 75 to 100 bucks. Um, so yeah, 80 hours, you know, it's not a not, not a cheap, cheap, no. Not yeah. a cheap Start saving the pennies if you want a snake bike. Yeah. Got the paint job pretty figured out. But then the rest of the bike, Bryn, you know, we mentioned he's particular about bike setup. It's not, not a lie. He's pretty particular. But let's go into a little bit of the basics. So this bike. I mean, I guess medium sized frame, then what else are you just, like what's the thing that has to be right on your bike? Oh man, everything dude, you know, just from racing my whole life, I, I, I literally cannot get on my bike and shred, or even like, I can't even go for a ride if the thing's not just dialed, you know, like I'm all, I'm, it's ridiculous, I'm constantly searching for that, like, you know, World Cup final setup, you know, it's like, it's just so ridiculous, but it's just kind of the way I am really, you know. Um, so yeah, and that's, I mean, yeah, we can go into the next question, I'm yeah. sure it's going to no. be a size related thing. Yeah, no, we can talk about, yeah, we can talk about size, the size of your snake. So going a little bit more setup, um, Bryn's about, what, 5'11 or so? 5'11. He's riding a, a medium Norco range, which nowadays might be on the smaller size, but how do you, I know you did some experimentation, you were kind of, this winter, you're going back and forth and trying to decide, and then how'd you set on the medium? Man, last year I had a bunch of them built up, I had a, I had a, a Norco Sight 2.9, both built uh, and a range and they were both built medium and large and for me it was just a matter of like just being able to play around on the trail I don't do anything crazy like you know jibbing off of trees and stuff like that but I do like just like hitting that little pocket you know and uh, and just playing with the trail and for me um, being on a bigger bike kind of muted that a little bit um, I think if I was to be like just racing and just really wanting to focus on like some straight line speed and maybe I'd go up a size or something but for me um, the smaller bike just kind of suits me a little bit better. It helps, you, it helps me kind of just wrap around the turns you know. Yeah, I guess other setup things, you got the coil uh, coil DHX2 on there. Have you gone air, coil, do you switch it back and forth? Or? Well, actually, that's actually because it, uh, visually I felt like it balanced the bike a little bit better, you know. But So I do ride, I do ride a, uh, an air shock, but uh, I, w I will try that at some point. Yeah, Probably a heavier spring, though. I've got a, I've got a uh, 550 on there right now, and it's just not enough for me right now. So for me to ride a coil, I'd probably need like a 600 or yeah. something. So, yeah, and we'll put all the details of the full bikes back under this so you guys can check and nerd out on all the tire pressures and air pressure and all that stuff. All right, well, thanks, Bryn. Thanks, Tony, for stopping by. That's Bryn's Norco Range snake bike. Um, if you want to subscribe to the Pink Bike channel, click here. Watch more videos, click here.